Hey, this is Makarov owner. I'm working on my little Dodge Dakota again, electrical issues. So I um, want to give an overview because I've made a breakthrough. I'm just going to kind of go back to uh, the beginning and I think I'm going to wipe out the previous videos. So uh, the problem that I was having was intermittent stalling. So what would happen is I'm driving down the road somewhere and the truck decides to just die. Or later on I would... Uh, you know drive it's up the temperature or whatever uh and then i go ahead and go into a store and then come back out and it won't start so a number of different problems and so i'm tracking this thing all over the place so underneath the distributor cap here there is a little plate and it's basically a sending unit for the spark that comes off of the crank sensor or what have you and so i'm chasing around that thing it would warm up and then it would shut down it wouldn't work um, so I, I went through that a number of times I took it to an auto electrician all kinds of stuff went into like three different shops and they weren't any help so uh, I replaced the distributor I replaced um, that other piece and then I found that working with the the fuse panel that I had a bad electronic fan when the electronic fan would kick on it would kill the truck somebody else suggested you know what let's go after the coil and so uh, they said that it would warm up and potentially fail just like that timing piece would maybe warm up and fail so i said you know what give me your best coil and then i put the coil on and my daughter's boyfriend as we were moving this truck one day he looked over and he said you know what this uh not this ground but i mean this is a new ground wire but it was questionable it was actually kind of broken right down in here almost all the way through and then it was going on to this stud here that goes over by the thermostat housing and I went well that's all painted and stuff so I'm not sure I'm getting a good ground so I put it straight to the coil and then this wire here and this isn't quite right but it's functional I got to tape it up and whatever um, that goes down to if you follow it down it goes down to the bottom of the coil and so i could actually at times touch the plug-in down there on the bottom of the coil and it would stop working so there was a bad plug problem going to the bottom of the coil so i went to the wrecking yard and i got a pigtail out of a newer truck they actually had heavier gauge wire and i wired that in here and then i moved on to tracing wires all over the damn place I checked fuses everywhere and what have you and I went and started I unwrapped all these all these wire connections down here I ended up finding lots of problems in there and they actually had male and female plugs that were down inside there and they were corroded looking but they're covered with all this conduit and tape and crap and you couldn't find it so there were Y joints and all kinds of crap in I eliminated all that stuff. I actually put in an aluminum block going here to the to the maiden fuse panel and then I wrapped it in tape because I wanted to eliminate that Y joint and then I went here uh, and tied everything together and it might look a little shitty or whatever but you know what, it, it works. Uh, and it's a lot better than Y joints, at least I know that the wires are working and they're, they're conducting current. And then down behind the alternator here, believe it or not these guys they stepped from a thicker thicker gauge wire to a thinner gauge wire and then uh, going to the alternator and then it was able to uh, rub on something so I actually had like an intermittent short uh, arcing across there so um, anyway I did that I haven't had any of those problems with the the truck dying after I did that now before I did this electrical work I couldn't get the truck to start so I shot it with starting fluid and then it fired and I went huh I wonder if the trucks out of gas because the gauge lies to me right and I thought well that's pretty foolish of me but uh, anyway I did the electrical work and then I went ahead and decided to try to fire it up and it it wouldn't fire again so I once again I shot it with uh, with starting fluid after adding gas um, so even with gas it wouldn't run so i shot it with starting fluid and it started right up and i went ah i got a fuel pump issue and i just replaced the fuel pump on here like two to three years ago so i mean you know, basically got a bad fuel pump 
So a whole lot of problems. And now if I go to the dash, I don't have the truck running of course right now, but I've got intermittent problems on the dash. So um, even with the new fuel pump, my fuel gauge never moves. Uh, and it's got a new sending unit and all that stuff. It doesn't move. And then my speedometer, um, the speedometer sometimes works and sometimes it doesn't. It seems like if the speedometer doesn't work, the truck runs better, which is the weirdest damn thing. But if I, if I hit it like right up here, then I can get the speedometer to start working. Um, my oil pressure gauge is, uh, that, that seems to be okay, but I don't know. I mean, it, uh, it, it seems like if it's at an idle, uh, the gauge says that I'm running really low, and then when I add throttle to it, it jumps up high. The AC-DC current seems to work fine, and my temperature gauge, um, you know, I think it works okay, but I put in a manual gauge here a long time ago because I didn't want to trust whatever's going on with these electronics. So I pulled the cluster assembly out and I looked at that and I don't see any problems with any wires and I grabbed each one of the pins and kind of tried to see if they wiggled or not and they don't wiggle. So there's a board kind of right behind where the speedometer is and you can actually grab it with your hand and unplug it. It's, it's a little, I don't, know what, I don't know what it's called and I've never seen one before but it's like a little accessory board and it plugs into three or four pins. And I don't know if that's bad or what's going on, but since I had the dash out and put it back in, um, the speedometer doesn't seem to work. Uh, and I haven't gone driving it around yet to beat on the dash and see if it pops up like it used to or not, but I need to eliminate whatever this problem is in this cluster assembly. And looking on some of the forums, guys are talking about that the pins on the back of these cluster assemblies go bad and that they have to be resoldered and all this kind of crap I don't know I, you know I'm kind of tempted to you know rewire pull out these damn gauges and rewire the whole thing because even going to the wrecking yard you know in the forum they were saying that you know that all of these end up doing this at some point and so it doesn't make any sense to to go um get another one and maybe have problems either now or later i don't know but then i saw something in a newer vehicle i don't know if it applies to the 95 or not that evidently the computer talks to the uh the cluster assembly and that it's part of the system and if this is failing it'll run like shit so i i don't know what to think if i can abandon this cluster and go to something else or or not anyway if anybody knows uh if you post a comment let me know that that would be great but otherwise I'll, I'll tell you another thing that happened was since i do have the manual gauge and i did that electrical work and i replaced the pump i now run in temperature about 165 to 170 degrees uh going down the road and uh, my fan doesn't kick on until 210, but if I'm running 165 to 170, the truck used to run at 190 to 210. And so I've dropped literally um, anywhere from, say, 25 to 45 degrees in temperature just by solving those uh, electrical problems. Now, if I'm sitting in an idle like at the bank for half an hour in the drive through like I did the other day, it went up to like 210, 212 and then the electronic fan kicks on and then it pushes it back down but it's running a lot cooler um you know on the average than it had been just by changing out those problematic electrical pieces and you wouldn't think that would have any pro any any effect so to speak on engine temperature but it did so you know, I've mentioned this to other people, and they're pretty surprised by that. But um, anyway, I, you know, those those harnesses and that kind of stuff. I mean, on the outside, without stripping everything off, you couldn't see all of that. And then when I found a male and female plug that were uh, kind of shitty, I went, "Who does this?" I mean, Ford doesn't do this. 
and then you know having that those main cables like spliced together and kind of hidden who, who does that i mean what kind of stupid shit is that anyway i was pretty pissed off you know it's one thing to have some wires go bad but i mean this just seems like a horrible plan to me and uh god i'm so frustrated with this dodge dakota it's not even funny but you know i don't want to scrap it because it's got a good trans and it's got a good engine it's only got like 124,000 miles on it see so i don't want to scrap a truck for you know an electrical issue and anyway i i think that this is largely solved now i just got to deal with this cluster uh deal but i thought this was well worth passing on to everybody else have a good day thanks bye